So I'm gonna go ahead and get started then. So hi, my name is Horace. I'm an event host at Horseations. Um, just a disclaimer, I'm not, I have never been a bartender. Um, I bar backed a little bit before, um, but I've always been interested in drinks and mixology and the history and the stories behind it. And so I've been doing this since 2013 and the comfort of my home and since COVID, it's just sprouted like exponentially. And so I just wanted to share my love for it with everybody. And so Valentine's Day is up. So happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. I hope you have plans with loved ones. Um, and uh, for those who celebrate, happy Lunar New Year's. And so this, um, this course is gonna go over, of course, the classic cocktail of the Cosmopolitan. You've probably heard of it many times, um, probably from Sex in the City. Um, a sitcom that ran from 1998 to 2004. It was actually because of Sex in the City that the Cosmopolitan got worldwide recognition. Um, and it is the last true classic cocktail to be born in the 20th century. And so I'm going to highlight two uh, bartenders, famous bartenders for this cocktail. Um, I'm going to go over them in a second. Neil Murray and Cheryl Cook. You might have heard of them before, but Let's not wait. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the Dale DeGroff version of the cocktail. So let me just give me a second and share my second camera here so you can see my, there we go. I hope that is, I hope that is a little better. All right. So I hope everyone can see this. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the, uh, like one of the very first versions of the Cosmopolitan. So of course we're gonna grab our martini glass because that's what it was made in originally. And the first thing we're gonna do is of course add the vodka. And so over here I have a little cute bottle of Absolute Citron. You might be hard to see because of the light, but Absolute Citron was the um, bottle that was featured in the original Cosmopolitan. Um, I can explain this a little later, but I just have a cute little bottle because I don't use this often. So I just went ahead and grabbed this from the store. This is exactly, well, a little bit more than 1.5 ounces, but who doesn't like a little bit more vodka in their drink, right? So we're gonna go ahead and just pour that into our shaker. Next, we're gonna grab lime juice. And so a neat trick about limes is that when you want to squeeze them with a citrus squeezer such as this, you want to cut off the ends so that it's easier for you to squeeze through the citrus squeezer. Go ahead and cut it in half. And then we're going to do half an ounce of lime juice. Oops, part of the lime there. There we go, half an ounce in down. Great. Next, we're going to do the triple sec. So the triple sec that I'm going to use is from Bowles, uh, which is a very famous dis um, distillery, I guess, in Amsterdam. Um, they're very famous for their liqueurs. Their museum is amazing as well. So feel free to visit sometime when you're in Amsterdam, if we can travel again safely, of course. So I'm going to add half an ounce in. So this is just basically um, adds orange flavors into the drink. And afterwards, we're going to go ahead and add our cranberry juice because this cranberry juice is what makes it pop with that beautiful red. And so the cranberry juice I pre-poured here is ocean spray. That is what the original called for. Ocean spray, cranberry juice. So go ahead and use that. And that's pretty much it. Simple four ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ice. So if you're following along at home, go ahead and make this. I hope you're making this as well. A little bit of ice cubes. All right. And so you just go ahead and pop that in and you just shake it up. All right. Here we have the drink. So of course, when you do this, you want to always double strain because you don't want ice shards getting into your drink. Do 
this is pretty much the cosmopolitan. So when you're finished with your bar tools, you always want to clean up. You can put everything back in their original spots so that their net strength can be prepared right away and you're not scrounging around for missing tools. There we go, we have this ready. So this is the Cosmopolitan. You can see it's a beautiful hue of red, but of course this drink is not finished because it needs a garnish. And so Dale DeGroff, a very famous bartender in the Rainbow Room, he garnished and made it very, like I guess made it with flair by garnishing with the flame orange peel. And so I hope I can show this to you guys. So what you want to do is you want to cut a meaty piece because you want to be able to squeeze this peel. So a very meaty piece of an orange peel. What you're going to do is you're going to grab a match. Be careful whenever you play with fire. Light it up. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold it right above the cocktail and squeak. Ooh. I saw the oils come out, but a uh, little sparks, it's a little difficult there. Yeah, this orange is not cooperating with me, but normally you would see a lot of, a quick spark of fire. And afterwards with the orange peel, you would rim the glass just like this to get the orange aromas really sweet. And then you drop that in and that is your Cosmopolitan. My apologies, it didn't work with me there, but go ahead and have a taste. So immediately when I bring it to my nose, I smell, I smell oranges, like so much oranges. Um, the cranberry really pops. It's very sweet because we're using an orange liqueur and we're using um, cranberry juice. And so we're gonna go ahead and put that to the side. And so if you make one yourself, feel free to cheers, enjoy. Well, I'll go a little bit into the history of the Cosmopolitan. So I switch my screen back. Good. I'm just gonna open the chat. So if you have any more questions or anything, feel free to go ahead and ask away. All right. So first, Neil Murray. So Neil Murray was a bartender at the Cork and Cleaver Steakhouse in Man uh, Minneapolis. And um, pretty much he observed this cocktail transform over time. Well, various transformations. By first, it was a gimlet. So a gimlet is basically your standard daiquiri, which is rum, lime juice, and simple syrup. It turned into a gimlet, which is gin instead of rum. And then that transformed into vodka gimlet because some people didn't like gin. And so they replaced it with vodka because vodka is pretty neutral. And then it turned into kamikaze, which basically replaced the simple syrup with triple sec. And so afterwards he was bartending and he was like, huh, wait a minute. I kind of want to just test something new. And so all he did was just take the kamikaze, took a Cape Cotter, which is your standard cranberry vodka, just dumped the two together. That was the story. And then he was just looking at it like, huh. It looked a little something like this. And then a patron, a regular was like, hmm, what'd you do there? Neil just said, well, I just thought this cocktail needed a little bit more color. And guess what the response was? The story goes, well, how cosmopolitan. And so hence the birth of the cosmopolitan in this story. And afterwards, Neil moved to San Francisco. He moved there to study. And afterwards he worked as a job as a waiter and he recommended a cosmopolitan in the West Coast. And it, it just exploded because at that time with the cosmopolitan, the early 2000s, the flavored martinis was a huge thing. There was just, Flair martinis, you've heard of probably the apple teeny, the lemon drop martini, the espresso martini, all the teenies. And everyone just loved the sweet flavor. And so hence, it was just a immediate boom. That's one story, but I like the Cheryl Cook story because she actually is officially named the creator of the Cosmopolitan cocktail by famous cocktail historian, Gary Regan. And so, Cheryl worked at the bar at the Strand restaurant in South Beach, Miami. Fun fact about the Strand, it, is, it was Miami's first hangout spot for all sexual orientations back then. We're talking the 1980s. 
And so that was a pretty hip spot. And so in 1989, Cosmopolitan Magazine was featuring the restaurant at the time. And Cook was just given a new product to try. You probably guessed it. Where's my bottle? There it is. This little cute bottle, the Absolute Citron. It was a new style of vodka at the time. Basically, it was, it is vodka that's infused with lemon peels. And so she was wondering, hmm, what can I do with this? And so she wanted to make a cocktail to match the color of the magazine, which was Cosmopolitan, the pink. And she stated, wow, it's so pretty. It's uh, oh so pretty in pink. And just basically all she says, even to this day, if you ask her what the Cosmopolitan is, all she says is, it's just a kamikaze with cranberry juice in it. It's that simple. A lot of riffs of cocktails come from previous classic cocktails, but it just hit immediately because of the color and the sweetness and the flavor. So first off, it was originally stirred and it was used in a martini glass such as this. Cheers. Because look at Look at this, don't you just look sophisticated with a martini glass? And that was it. Because a lot of people could not handle martinis. So they chose instead to the Cosmopolitan because you still look so sophisticated with a martini glass and yet you can still enjoy your drink. I mean, not saying martinis are bad, it's just personal taste, right? But everyone had a major sweet tooth back in the day. And so, with that being said, before it uses Rose's Lime Cordial. And so you probably see that in the grocery stores everywhere, but it was so popular that every night, every meal service actually, they had to prep at least 80 glasses ready for just the Cosmo at any time. She served, end up serving celebrities such as Madonna, end up serving uh, Martin Scorsese. And with that, Gary Regan just was so astonished by this that he was like, well, I acknowledge you as a creator. And so with that, over the time, bartenders just upgraded the cocktail with like fresh ingredients. And so as you saw, I used fresh lime juice instead of lime cordial. And then triple sec, you can use uh, bowls, in, uh, sorry, uh, Cointreau, which is a dry curacao liqueur. And so with that, we do have uh, half the time passed, but the rest of the time I'm going to go ahead and make some cocktails for you guys for Valentine's Day because the color is just popping, it's perfect. Make it for your loved one. But I'm going to show you my version of the Cosmopolitan first. So let me go ahead and share my desk or sorry, counter again. Hope you guys can see. All right. So let me just clean up a little bit. I still have half a line left. Great. So. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to grab my glass. I personally do not like the martini glasses because when you're holding it, you have to be super careful. You see it sloshing around like that. So you just got to be super careful with it, the spills. So we end up, I like using the um, uh, Nicanora glasses. Uh, you could also use these uh, coupe glasses. It's up to you personal preference, but actually let's just use the coupe glass today. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and make my version of the Cosmopolitan. So um, first things first, I made some simple syrup beforehand. So simple syrup is a very easy uh, concoction. Never buy it in grocery stores, guys. All you need to do is measure the same part water, same part granulated sugar, white sugar, simmer it in low heat, and then just shake up the sugar just to melt it. And then just, you got your simple syrup simple syrup so don't buy it in those grocery stores all right so what i'm going to do is add half an ounce because this actually helps tie some of the flavors together because of the sugar okay and then what i'm going to do is actually add only half an ounce of cranberry juice because what happened with this cocktail you see is so bright red um the cranberry juice actually overpowers the uh, other ingredients in the cocktail. So we don't want that, but we still want a pretty pink color. And so I'm only gonna add half an ounce of cranberry juice. Afterwards, instead of 
uh, bowls, I'm going to use Cointreau. You've probably seen this before. It's a hugely popular uh, orange liqueur from France. It's very dry, and so it works great in citrus cocktails. So I'm only going to add half an ounce because we don't want this too sweet. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and add 0.75, uh, sorry, 0.75, my bad. 0.5 ounces of lime juice. I'm getting my ingredients mixed up here. Um, so I still have a little bit of lime juice left from this lime, but this is a juicy one. Get the other half. 0.5 ounces. So 0.5 ounces of lime juice in. And now, of course, for the spirit. So I'm just gonna use plain vodka. So I choose Tito's, which is distilled in Texas from corn. So it tends to be a little sweeter uh, than other vodkas. I know people say vodka doesn't have much taste to it. That's kind of true. But then um, if with the vodka experts out there, like I don't claim to be one myself, uh, they claim that if you do sit down, taste it, add some like purified water in there. There are some subtle differences. And so I'm just going off of what they say, but Tito's has never done me wrong. And I'm gonna add two ounces. Who doesn't like more vodka, right? All right. And so last but not least, the secret ingredient to citrus cocktails is a saline solution. I'm not sure if you can see, but this is a heavily concentrated salt solution pretty much. Um, you're wondering why am I adding salt into a cocktail? Well, you're gonna have to ask Dave Arnold, look him up. Just like when you add salt and pepper into your uh, kitchen, the salt also helps bring the flavors out of the citrus. So only two drops because this is heavily concentrated. All right. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and add my ice. In. Shake it up. All right. Double strain, and look at that. There's a little bit of glare from the window, so I'll pull it up to the camera so you can see. But let me wash my tools first. As you can see, it's a very, very pink. So it's like perfect for Valentine's Day. I hope you guys can see it there. And then what I'm gonna do actually, I don't prefer, I mean, this is, you could do this. There's nothing wrong with this at all. It's your personal choice preference with cocktails. Um, the thing is, I personally don't like it just because uh, you're adding the whole peel in there and it just keeps um, excreting the oils and the aromas and then the white part, the pith, is still in there. And so it could tend not to be bitter over time. And so I just like to keep it simple and just add a lime wheel, not a lime wedge, because a lime wedge just symbolizes that, oh, I'm just gonna take it and squeeze a little bit into my drink. So we don't want that because it's already pretty balanced. And so I'm just gonna cut a little wheel up there. That's pretty much it. This is your Cosmopolitan. And so this version you can make at home very easily. It's very similar ingredients. So I'm gonna have a taste. So it's much stronger, of course, with the vodka. Cointreau is also 40% alcohol compared to triple sec, which is 20% or lower. And so, ah, very, very good. So be cautious there for your loved ones. You don't want to get them too drunk on Valentine's Day. Uh, all right, so last but not least, we still have a few minutes left. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys, um, go ahead and get a pen and paper. You can write this down. You might not have these ingredients at home, but I made this cocktail up in the past week just for Valentine's Day that I wanna show, share with you guys. 
Um, you can also use this cocktail to go ahead and impress your loved one, your date, um, your friends. It doesn't matter. Valentine's Day is for everybody, not just couples. So it's also a shaken cocktail and it's a play on the last word. If you've heard of the last word before, it's a gin cocktail that uses really strong liqueur, green chartreuse, and it's very, very tart, very, very complex flavor. So this one maybe not as complex, but uh, it's the ingredients that have a little play in them. So first things first, what I like to do is I'm gonna chill this glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some ice to my Nicanor glass just to chill it. Set that to the side. And then I am going to first add the, let's see. Mm, see, I, I drink so much now, I don't even remember what I'm gonna get for the ingredients. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, so the first things first is we feature Plymouth Gin in this cocktail. Plymouth Gin is a very earthy gin. It tends to be a little sweeter um, than the uh, Juniper Forward gins, and so I like using this one for the cocktail. It's a little bit more, um, you know, some more bot botanicals than a uh, standard vodka cocktail. And so I added 0.75 ounces. Afterwards, I'm gonna go ahead and add Becherovka. So this nice uh, liqueur, or it's considered an Amaro. This is a whole different categories of liqueurs. I can get into this uh, some other time, but it's bittersweet and uh, it tastes of no, cloves, ginger, um, some orange peels. So it's a very like wintry in a sense, but I thought that the ginger notes and the uh, orange peels really match what I'm gonna add next into the cocktail. So I'm gonna add 0.75 ounces into there. Mmm, smell it. So good. You'll probably already peek at what I'm gonna use next. There's a piece of ginger right here. But the next ingredient is this lovely thing that I wanted to feature for Valentine's Day, the X-rated fusion liqueur. So this is a vodka base with a lot of uh, blood orange, mango, and passion fruit. A lot of citrus notes in this, very sweet. You could drink this with uh, champagne. You could drink this uh, by itself, actually. I do not recommend that. You might finish the whole bottle. Um, but uh, X-rated is perfect for Valentine's Day because no comment. So we're gonna go ahead, same thing, add 0.75. And that's what brings out the color of the cocktail as well. Then of course we add citrus to it. We're gonna add a lemon instead because lemon pH levels are a little bit higher than a uh, lime. So it won't be as uh, sour because we're gonna keep it sweet for Valentine's Day. Oh, these lemons are huge. I don't even know if they're gonna fit in my citrus squeezer. Okay, they do. All right, 0.75. There we go. Ooh, look at all the juice. Oh, almost there. Almost there. There we go. 0.75. Great. So last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and use passion fruit syrup. This is from Small Hand Foods. Um, you can find this at your local grocery store. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pour a little bit into this container right here. Just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and cut up some ginger, so a small bit of ginger. I'm gonna cut it into little bits and pieces. Add that in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this muddler and you're gonna muddle it. It's kind of like gets the ginger flavors and the oils out into the passion fruit syrup. And so the passion fruit syrup helps tie the flavors of the X-rated liqueur together. All right, can I take a whiff? Mmm, I smell it. So good. And so this one, you don't want to add too much. So I'm only going to add point, point 0.25 ounces. So it's a very small amount. It just helps to tie some of the flavors together. Set that to the side. And then of course, we don't forget the saline solution. Two drops. And so for this cocktail as well, I'm only going to add a 
a small amount of ice cubes in. It's hard to see right now because of the lighting, but I'm only gonna add a small amount of ice cubes. You can hear it, it's not a lot, because you don't wanna over dilute this cocktail, it's not gonna taste good, because the uh, ingredients are not as high ABV compared to uh, the last word ingredient. So we're just gonna shake it until you kind of hear a slushy sound. Great. Dump my ice. And then I'm going to strain it. All right. And what you can do, so because we're running out of time, I'm just gonna set it to the side, is just take a little bit of rose petals, dried rose petals that I got, and just go ahead and just sprinkle it right in the middle. And then take some rose water. You can find this at your local uh, bar store. Just add like two drops to it, just to uplift the rose of aromas for Valentine's Day. And there you go, cheers. I call this the passion um, chats, uh, my apologies there. Um, so someone asked, um, do I make the uh, saline solution? Yes, I do. Um, if you look up Dave Arnold, he actually goes over this um, in his book, Liquid Intelligence. Um, you could probably find it online as well. There, it's, uh, I believe it's 20% salt and 80% water, I believe. Um, I could be wrong, but it's that ratio. And then a simple syrup, you do want to, this question is how long can you store it for? You store it in the fridge. Um, good practice is to store it uh, within a, and use it up within a month. Um, I made this, I think, two weeks ago before using it. You can keep it on the counter with your drinks, uh, especially if you use two times the sugar to water, um, because the sugar, um, especially in a seal type container, it won't uh, have bacteria growing in it for a month. And um, I'm sorry about missing the chat. I'm still figuring out how to work out Zoom while I'm sharing a second dairy content, because I want you guys to see the countertop as well. Uh, I will send this out for sure. Uh, it will be on. Um, it will be on YouTube. Um, yeah, I'll send it out to everybody on the event list, um, and uh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it tonight for you guys. Yeah, thank you guys for joining. I very much appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm glad you had so much fun, Derek. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I again, I apologize. I need to work out the kinks of the Zoom. I just don't know how to have the chat, but I want you guys to see the cocktails. But maybe I can, if I had like all four hands, you know, I can like hold up like just all these drinks at once. Yeah. So yeah, I, I like my drinks. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I like my drinks simple um, and uh, the garnishes. You see a lot of flourishing garnishes, nothing wrong with them but I like these simple ones because sometimes there's garnishes that could get in your way and you're like, oh, how am I supposed to drink this cocktail, right? The sh Will I be sharing the recipe somewhere? Hmm, good question. Uh, how about this? I can share this in the YouTube notes uh, because I was going to upload this recording onto YouTube so that people uh, can see and I'll put it in the description of the video. Um, I hope that works. So yeah, that, that pretty much concludes. I, I know there was a lot to go go over. There was four different, well, three different cocktails. Um, I mean, for Valentine's Day, you can make a lot of classic cocktails. Um, the Jack Rose is one. Uh, feel free to look that up. A very simple cocktail, only requires three ingredients. Um, Jack Rose, uh, Clover Club is a very popular one. Um, feel free to make those class classic cocktails for Valentine's Day. They're also red in color. Yeah, pink, red, that's all they're perfect for Valentine's Day. But I hope you guys enjoyed the one I created, Passion X1. I know we're uh, one or two minutes um, over time, um, but I'll be here for the next two, three minutes to answer any further questions you might have. Um, yeah, other than that, happy Valentine's Day. Enjoy with your loved ones. And uh, thank you for joining again. Thank you so much, everybody. Go ahead and just scroll up in case I miss more questions. Oh, of course, uh, the recipe for the Passion X1. Yes, I can type it out. So I'm gonna say it out loud while I type it up. It is 0.75 ounce of uh, X-rated. I drink so much that I'm like, I need to.
look over my grades to remember what I added. Uh, Plymouth Gin. You can also play around with other gins too. Uh, Plymouth Gin I just chose because I prefer the subtle um, earlier notes compared to the heavy juniper forward ones such as uh, Beef Eater. But uh, those are pretty standard too. You can try them out if that fits your palate. So that's the cool thing about cocktails because um, there's no, I don't believe in like set, set recipes. It's basically you can go from those set recipes and tweak it. Tweak it uh, to your liking, your palate. Thank you, Helen. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Heidi, for joining. Sorry if I missed some. Thank you, Devin. I am like lost right now. I'm like drinking and then like trying to type this recipe up. Uh, Betcheroka. Oh yes, Empress Gin is a beautiful one. So you probably figured out when you use Empress Gin, um, when you add citrus to it or tonic water, it changes color to pink because of the change of pH levels. And so that's the cool thing about the butterfly, butterfly pea flower. Um, 75 ounce lemon juice, 0.25 ounce passion fruit ginger. is the recipe yes yes uh, butterfly pea flour um, if you drop it into vodka you pretty much have um, a makeshift gin in a sense because you're infusing the color but also the flavors of the botanicals into the vodka because gin is pretty much uh, flavored vodka in a sense um, it's just that people took that creative creativity to a whole new level by um, infusing so many botanicals into it that's where the creativity comes in, right? It's limitless. Awesome, awesome. That's great, Billy. Yeah, um, I have one myself. I actually personally haven't played around with my uh, Butterfly Pea Vodka. I have, I have Empress Gin. I've used it for some cocktails. It's amazing in a simple gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah, I know. By dripping some citrus into it. Yeah, it's a good point, Billy. Uh, it does uplift some of the aromas of the uh, Empress Gin because it does use a lot of citrus. Gins use citrus besides juniper. Don't worry, like, you know, some people get deterred from gin because of that strong juniper. But um, you can also check out uh, New Age gins uh, because um, a lot of New Age gins such as Ryan Reynolds Aviation Gin, uh, Hendrix Gin, they use less juniper in their gins so that it's the other botanicals can shine. Like gin, uh, Hendrix uses rose petals and uh, cucumbers. So you see a lot of uh, Hendrix with the, you know, the cucumber garnish, it's, it's pretty neat. And in aviation is a lot of, a lot of spice. If you like a lot of spice into your gin, uh, Ryan Reynolds, aviation gin, very good. I'm gonna let you know that passion fruit is really strong, the syrup, so you don't wanna add too much because it'll be too sweet and then you can't taste the other ingredients in the cocktail. So there is some balance too. Thank you, thank you, Sierra. I hope you're pronouncing your name right. Uh, thank you, Dae, thank you, Jean. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And thank you, Billy. All right, well, class is over. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Lunar New Year's if you celebrate. Bye, everybody.